So we all know that DaVinci Resolve is now on the iPad and is quite optimized for M1 and M2 iPads, but can it handle 12K footage? Let's talk about it. But first, this video is sponsored by Detail. Have you ever been recording a video and wanted a second angle, but either don't have another camera or don't want a bunch of cables lying around? Detail is a fantastic app that allows you to use your iPhone, iPads, or any iOS device as a secondary camera to your Mac, easily creating an awesome multi-cam experience. And not only can you record, but also edit and add different effects all within one app, allowing you to create amazing vertical and horizontal content for all social media platforms. And with their brand new AI tools, you can generate custom titles, keywords, transcribe your video, and even pull out highlights from long form content. Detail is currently free to download and play around with. And if you want to get three months free before the pro plan comes out, definitely check out the link in the description below to check it out. Thanks Detail for sponsoring today's video. So I've been very impressed lately by just what this app can do. And of course, the whole big news of you can add all the DaVinci Resolve pages, but they're not all optimized. So I'm on the edit page. If you want to catch up with that news, check out this video over here. But I've been very curious because my Mac Pro can handle 12K B-Raw footage pretty well because B-Raw is a very optimized and amazing codec for cameras. But how does an M1 chip on an iPad handle it? So if I go over to my files app here, I currently have a hard drive plugged in and I preloaded a bunch of 12K B-RAW files and you can see the file sizes on 12K footage isn't that bad. Now these clips aren't very long, but 12K files for just, you know, a couple or a handful of gigs to me is pretty incredible. Now if we jump back to DaVinci Resolve here and I go into my media pool, I'm going to go in and import said footage, select all the footage here and hit open. All right, so now we've imported the 12K files into our media pool here, and we can see that just by hovering the mouse, we can scrub through with ease. And if I were to select one of these clips, play it back, we can see on our little frame rate clock at the top, we're playing back at 24 real time, and that's pretty incredible. Now these are obviously cropped uh, 12K. These are... 12,288 by 5,112. So it's a 21 by nine aspect ratio. And then some of these clips are slow motion files on the Ursa 12K. So this I believe is 8K at 120 FPS, which is just bonkers to me. Now, if you wanna be able to download these project files for yourself and get hands-on experience with this raw footage, any members of my course are going to get access to all this footage. I still have it at a discounted rate right now, so you can check it out, the top link in the description below. Right now, it's in its very simplistic form with just getting started with DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, but by the end of the weekend, I'm going to switch it over to the new platform, which is gonna have a bunch of raw footage and resources like this, so if you want want to have access to that stuff so you can actually follow along with these videos and play with some awesome 12k sample footage then check it out in the link in the description we just crossed over 400 members and i'm super excited to have everybody and can't wait to really build a community around davinci resolve anyways let's drop these down into the timeline and see what sort of performance we get out of it not only playing back in its raw form but we'll add some layers of color grading and effects to really push the limits of the ipad so i'm just going to go ahead and break all this footage down here. So let's go in and first we're just going to do a very simple round of uh, taking it from its log raw format to just applying the you know rec 709 conversion and just grab the gen 5 color science here and I'm just going to create a still and just apply that to all the clips so it just applies that to everything. All right. So now we just have the Rec. 709. Let's see if we can still get proper playback. Looks like every clip here is still playing back fully. Now I should mention that this is a 1080p timeline. That's the default for a new project. So what happens if we make this more realistic by today's standards? So we'll do a 4K timeline. So we'll do 40, 96, 2160. It's a very popular format here. And let's try playing it back. Wow. I'm honestly quite impressed. I really thought going to a 4K timeline was going to really push it a bit. Now this clip is handheld, so what if we wanted to apply a little bit of stabilization? I'm just gonna go with similarity. It's gonna analyze it. Why did that crop in so much? Oh, it's, I always do this. Uh, it's because the clip starts out with me being super shaky. So let me 
detriment to the actual framing. Yeah, if, you're, if your stabilization ever gets thrown off, make sure at the beginning and the end, you're not like crazy moving the camera because then it's taking that into effect for the stabilization. So let's try that again. Similarity, stabilize, goes a lot faster. There we go, much more better of a crop. It was so fast. Guys, this is ridiculous. I never, <laughs> this is a $13,000 computer and this is a it's like 2000 because of the storage but it's like a thousand dollar ipad <laughs> we're editing a 4k project with 12k footage and i have no proxies no cache files or anything like that but let's keep pushing it to the ultimate extreme so this clip for example which is a bit long so i'm going to shorten it down go to like here so the slow motion, it's got a fair amount of noise in it that we can see. And so we're gonna add a little bit of noise reduction to this. And that is pretty much a surefire way to slow things down and bottleneck this machine. So I'm gonna do what I normally do. The three frames, the Luma and Chroma, I usually take to around four. For most clips that seems to do the trick. Instantly it looks a lot better there. Let's see, playback. Yep, there it is. It's pretty much chugging along. Won't go past six or seven frames and, and even kind of completely pauses. So not really to be able to be played back. So what can we do in this scenario if we have a project that we have to add noise reduction or a much heavier color grade to where we're running into this, but we still need good playback on the iPad. So this is where we're going to introduce proxies or cache files. Now, a lot of people like proxy workflows, especially if they're working with other editors. I don't have a traditional editing mindset, so I never really use proxy files. I just use cache files. So to find the cache settings, we're simply just going to go to the settings icon in the bottom right hand corner. And under general options, we can see render cache right here. And we first wanna choose our location. I'm gonna hit browse and I'm actually just gonna put it on the same hard drive. I wanna be careful not to like fill up my internal drive. As long as you have a decently fast SSD that you're plugged into, it should be perfectly fine. And I'm just gonna make a new folder on here, call it cache. I, I like having all my projects go to one cache file because if I ever need to clean it up, it just makes it so much easier to find. All right, so now that we have our cache files location solved, we want to choose when cache files will be used. So right now it's currently set to none. Smart, DaVinci Resolve essentially is going to look at each clip and try to justify if it thinks it needs it or not. To be honest, this can be a hit or miss experience. I usually end up doing user, and so I'm going to select that, and I'm going to hit save. Now, right off the bat, as soon as we save that, nothing happens because we, the user, have not designated any clips to have cache files be created. I like this because then you're not creating unnecessary cache files because we can see that most of these clips don't actually need it unless we were to imply noise reduction or anything. So I'm gonna do on this clip, I'm going to right click. If you don't have a physical keyboard and you're just using the touch to right click, you'll just long hold on the clip. So just press and hold with your finger or Apple pencil, whatever. Towards the bottom after we right click, we can see render cache fusion output or render cache color output. In this case, we want a color output because we added a bunch of color effects. And so once I select that, we will now see a red bar show up over over this clip and then in a couple seconds we will start to see a blue progress bar and that is it basically creating the cache file for that clip so now it's just kind of a patience game now why would you go cache files versus proxies or vice versa it all depends on how you're building out your project for me, a lot of the time I will do my edits before I do a color grade. And so as long as my system can handle editing the raw log footage, there's no reason for me to create proxies. So I can build out my entire project and then go into my color, do all the color grading. And then if I wanna play it back and watch it and make a couple final changes, that's not a big deal because once this cache file is rendered out, if I recut this clip, if I change the length, if I move it around, it's going to have to reprocess that cache clip all over again, and that's really time consuming. Now with proxy files, the workflow for that is usually people will create proxy files 
as soon as they import the footage into their project. So in the beginning, before we ever put anything on our timeline, you would select all of your media, generate proxies or generate optimized media, save those somewhere, and then you'd actually edit with that throughout the project. That is great if you are working with a ton of footage that maybe the system can't handle editing in the first place. Again, from my workflow, the way I'm looking at it is this project is say done with editing for the most part. And now I'm just going in color grading and I just wanna render cache all the clips that I need to so that I can just get a final playback before I go and export. So now that the cache clip has fully rendered out, we can see that we can play back with our 24 FPS in real time with all of our noise reduction and effects turned on. And of course it transitions seamlessly from whether you have clips before or after it that don't have cache rendered to it. We can go straight from here to then immediately playing into this one. Honestly, I did not think that the iPad was gonna be able to handle 12K footage like this. Now again, every codec is very different. B-RAW is made by Blackmagic, just like DaVinci Resolve. And they have worked very close with Apple who have optimized the software for the iPad and M1 Max and all that good stuff. So on any computer that I've used 12K B-RAW, a lot of times I have better experience on that than H.265 4K files from certain other cameras. So it really shows the dedication and hard work that both Apple and Blackmagic have put into optimizing this device and this software for a professional grade workstation. In the past couple of months that I've been excited for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, I've had a lot of comments and a lot of people almost try to make fun of me for being like, what professional is gonna edit on an iPad? The fact that you can do it is just incredible in a nutshell. And there are a lot of people, including myself, who have an iPad as a secondary device because they didn't buy a super expensive MacBook Pro because they have a super expensive desktop. But when we need editing on the go, this is an incredible experience. I would love to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. Again, if you wanna play with this sample footage and see if whatever computer you are using can handle 12K footage, definitely check out my course below. I promise all the sample footage will be up uh, uh, by the end of this weekend. Depending on when this video goes out, it may already be live. Check the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.